Well, hey, you guys, I am so excited about this episode. And my guest sitting right here, Rebecca Lyons, is here. And she's an author, a speaker, a mom, and just has incredible insight into something that I think we're struggling with so much as a country. Yes. I hear stats and stats around depression, anxiety, stress, mm -hmm. and thanks to the pandemic. It's only escalated. I know. It just <laughs> magnifies it all. Magnifies it all. Right. So you have a really personal story mm -hmm. in regards specifically with panic attacks, anxiety, all of that. So yeah. kind of tell, because a lot of your work comes from your yes. story, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's been a decade, 2010. Okay. We decided it'd be really fun to move from the suburbs of Atlanta to New York City. Very logical to do when you have a four, seven, and nine-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Everyone else usually leaves the city at that point. We're entering. You're like, I'm just going to dive in. <laughs> yes. And so um, I found about four months into my time there, you have 8 million people in 11 miles. Um, there is no such thing as personal space. So four months into my time in New York, I actually had my first panic attack. Mm. And it was on a flight, landing in LaGuardia around midnight. We mm. had crazy turbulence. I had gone back to Atlanta, I went back to visit, and then coming back home, and something rose in me. I'd never had something like this before. Mm -hmm. Just kind of soles of my feet all the way, all the way up. And I just felt gripped in fear, like just this— like, and it, and for me, my anxiety was rooted in claustrophobia, though I wouldn't have known it then. It was always yeah. when I felt this metaphor of being trapped. Mm. I was less afraid of the turbulence and us crashing than yes. I was like, when this thing lands, I'm going to be trapped on the back of this plane. Like, I got to yes. get out of here. So I start, like, running to the front of the plane while we're doing this <laughs> at, at midnight. Because <laughs> you're just like, my attendant's like, what are you? <laughs> and I'm like, you know, just barreling towards her. And I just remember saying panic. And I couldn't, I couldn't stop it. Mm. I think for those who have had an anxiety attack or people are like, what are the what are the differences on yep. that continuum from anxiety to full-blown panic disorder? Yep. It's when you really have no um, ability to control something that kind of takes over. Um, and it's and for a lot of people, it might look like um, like racing heart, shortness of breath. You yes. might feel like you're suffocating or you're having a heart attack or whatever. Well, I've had one okay. panic attack in my entire life. And it was, this was probably, probably 10 years ago. We were on a family cruise on a trip with yeah. the family. And we, and my dad told us the story of this medical diagnosis that a child that we knew oh. got. And I just kind of felt this like thing in my body. And I was like, oh, that's weird. So we get off the ship and I remember we go get into a van to do this tour oh, at some place. And I was in the back and I, I literally, I like started yelling. I was like, I got to get out. I have yeah. to get out. I did. And I, yeah. And I get off to the side of the road, and I thought I was having a heart attack. Yeah, I thought I was dying. Yeah. I really did. I was like, because I had no clue. I had no, yeah. I didn't know what a panic attack was. I mean, none of that. Yeah. And my sweet mom, she said next to me, she was like, you're having a panic attack, <laughs> Rachel. You are having a panic attack. You're okay. And I was like, oh, I can't. I was like, mom, I think I'm dying. Like, oh, it was. Yeah, it's terrifying. Rebecca, it went, and I haven't had it since, thank God. Good, but, good. but people that struggle with it, though, like, yeah. I have such empathy for it because that was one of the most scary. Vulnerable. Uh, oh, like, just, worst. like, you're just, you're, you can't. Paralyzing. I mean, yeah, trapped feeling. Yeah, I, yeah. So I totally get it. I mean, from well, that. And, and notice your response was like, I got to get out. I got to get out. Like, I got to get, move, move, move. Oh. Like, like something about the get, escaping the environment yes. helps you kind of like figure out what is happening. Yeah. I don't know. And so <laughs> for me, because it was rooted in that trapped thing, and we were now in New York, mm. and um, it consists of planes, trains, elevators, subways, and crowds. You know, I realized Jeez. this turned into like a full blown um, disorder. Yeah. It lasted about 18 months. I do remember September 20th of 2011. I literally wrote the date down. Wow. Um, it had been a, over a year later, and um, it was the middle of the night, and I woke out of a dream. And no longer silo to small spaces. I would just, you know, be walking the playground or in my own bedroom at night. Like, mm. it started to just get bigger. Like, fear grows, right? Yes. If you don't combat fear with exposure and, like, tackling it head on, it grows. Yeah. And so um, I remember waking up, and my, uh, my husband Gabe, he started praying. And then I really felt like God just gave me words, and I just said, Rescue me. Deliver me. I cannot do this without you. And mm. in that moment, my body just flattened on the bed and all was done. And I was calm. And I, and I like, it was the first time I didn't have to escape wow. to calm down. I just was like, literally like, nothing's moving in the dark but my eyeballs. <laughs> and I was like, did you see that? <laughs> yeah, what just happened? What just happened? And Gabe's like, you stopped. And I remember at the time I wouldn't have called it healing or anything like that because I just didn't know what was going on. But I definitely felt like I was flooded with peace. Mm. And it very much to me was a peace of God. It was this kind of sense of like, okay, you are going to spin out. I'm going to actually do what you've asked me to do. I'm going to rescue you. Mm. And 
And from that day forward, I stepped out of my apartment the next day and I was just like, did it take? I don't know. I'm going to get back on a subway. And I didn't have another one for seven years. Oh, wow. And that began my writing about it and studying mental health and learning one in four of us have, um, are, you know, are having to get treatment for anxiety or depression, you know. And that was, that was— 11, that was nine years ago. Which is probably more taboo. Now I feel yeah. like everyone's like, oh, yeah. I struggle with things. Now I feel everyone's like, like passing out their shrink's phone. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's it's right. It's like, you need a recipe. You need my psychiatrist. You know? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So it's definitely more mainstream, especially in areas of faith where it was yeah. very much shamed. Mm-hmm. And I actually believe that the vulnerability of talking about it just um, de- um, escalated the power that fear can have, right? You're like, oh, we're going to name fear. We're going to give fear a name. And then we're going to start to attack it yeah. and know how to address it. And so that was part of the practice for me from that point forward. Like, while I might not be gripped in fear at every moment, I know the muscle memory is there. Yes. I know that I still am not keen on going descending to the subway like seven floors underground to go to Queens. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to do that. And so sometimes I would do it afterwards, and I would get on it, and I would go like— Jesus, 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 Jesus. You know, like, I'm just like, whatever the verse like, I find, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah like, just, just like, whatever mentally. I needed to calm or breathing exercises. But ultimately, it just led to um, basically a mental health trilogy that I wrote. <laughs> it wasn't planned to be that way, but I wrote three books about it subsequently about just different ways to— to walk in freedom. And this last one, Rhythms of Renewal, was really just about um, how do you trade that stress anxiety Mm. and anxiety for a life of peace and purpose? What practical steps? Because I kept talking to a lot of listeners or readers um, that would say, okay, I feel like I'm experiencing that rescue moment, but now what? How do I take agency every day to live in a life for sustained emotional health? And so that's kind of really been my journey Mm -hmm. now. It's just helping people go like, this is like literally one whisper away. It's one step away. You can take agency every morning that you wake up, how you start your day, how you move your body, all those good things. Which is huge. And you have those rhythms that I want to talk about. But for you, like as you're studying all of this and you look at our world today, 2020, why do you think anxiety and you know, panic attacks, depression, all of that, that mental health is so escalated. Like, it's increased yeah. so much. I don't know if it's always been like that. And like we said earlier, we're willing to talk about it now. Or if Both. it's the pressures of society. Like, what do you think it is? Because I feel like it's just, it's rampant. Like, I have it so is. many friends that struggle with it. Yes, it definitely has escalated in the last 20 years. Partly since we have, a, you know, a smartphone attached to us at all times. So when you think about it, 100 years ago, up until about 1920, when we had the Industrial Revolution, people actually— um, sat under the boundaries of the circadian rhythm. You have sunrise that elicit that that emits um, blue light that tells you to wake up, and you have sunset that emits red light, which is natural melatonin for your body. Mm. It's as if God kind of knew what he was doing, right? <laughs> when he created, he's yeah. kind of he's well, like, intentional. He's like, this is what is an actual sustainable pace for a human being. Yes. But then we created factories, and then all of a sudden, that phrase always on was meant for machines because it was more efficient to keep them running through the night than to power them back up in the morning. Mm problem is we're not machines. And so we've got that mantra of always being on and working a little harder and pushing ourselves a little more. And then we wonder why now American Institute of Society says, um, of stress says that 78% of us have physical symptoms of stress. So coming Mm. into COVID, back before March, back before I was writing this book, almost four out of five of us were experiencing sleepless nights, racing thoughts, shallow labored breathing when you open your eye cal (laughs) or whatever your your thing is. Yes. Um, For me, it was looking at my calendar. Um, and we we feel like we're on this, basically this hamster wheel that we can't jump off of because it's all good things often. And more good things yield more good things like invitations and opportunities. And we want to say yes to all those things. But in the end, we're actually living beyond the boundaries of rhythm. Mm. We're living beyond the boundaries of what we're actually, of where we're actually able to flourish. So instead of thriving with all those opportunities, we're actually burning out. As a mom, every day I take precautions to give my family peace of mind. It's simple things like locking the front door, making sure the car seats are buckled in, and putting my phone away when I'm driving. But we don't always think about the bigger things. Like what if something happened to you or your spouse? That's why you need term life insurance. It makes sure your family's taken care of no matter what happens. I trust Xander Insurance. They keep my family protected and that gives me such peace of mind. They make things super simple and find the best options and prices. To learn more, call Xander today or go to xander.com. Make sure your family has the term life insurance they need. 
And I'm sensing a theme too from people that they are pulling back. Like I feel like for a while the hustle was celebrated so much. Yeah. Right? Like, like you can have it all. Yeah, go, 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 you go, can, go, go. You can, but you're going to, you know, Yeah, crash you're eventually going to crash. <laughs> yeah, and I think people are just more heightened and aware of taking care of themselves. Yes. And just knowing that yes. I think is, is huge. So so people that out there that maybe you guys watching struggling with, you know, again, that anxiety, that depression, that stress, what is the rhythm? What's yeah. the rhythm to put into our lives to help us kind of break that cycle? Sure. So it took about a decade for me to really kind of hone it and keep it simple because I'm not trying to complicate things. Nobody needs another to-do list right now. Um, but there's the, essentially four rhythms. Um, rest, restore, connect, create. So rest and restore are input rhythms. And those are the ones that are lacking in our lives usually. That's why we always output connect and create. Like we're you, I mean, connect is your healthiest rhythm. Like you're so great with people and you're dynamic. And, and then the create is often attached to our vocational health. So we're killing it at work, but we're not actually sleeping at night, right? Or we're not eating well, or we're not taking care of our bodies. So what happens is if we just focus on the output rhythms, that's when we that's when we show anxiety. That's mm -hmm. when anxiety ramps because we're always just keeping up. We're just kind of keeping our head above water, but there's not really a replenishment cycle that actually is coming out of the overflow. So this is kind of biblical when you think about it. You've got rest and restore. So rest is all about your inner life, your spiritual health. Like, who am I? Am I okay? Or God and I okay? Um, I In that section, I talk about routines for deep sleep or morning routine. Like, how do you begin? Yeah. That first hour sets the framework for the next 15. Um, things like Sabbath. Do you take time away from your phone? Do you take a tech detox? You know, do you take mm. inventory of your life? And that's the, I want to invite the reader into that right away. It's like, what's right, what's wrong, what's confused, and what's missing? Like, if you can answer those four questions, you can actually make some changes. And I think COVID has been the environment to invite people to do that. Yeah, I think it did. It forced us to almost do exactly what you're saying, to do those rhythms. COVID did. So like, yeah. the rest, right? Yes, rest, rest restore. restore which is, gosh, the restore part, I think so. And the tech detox yeah, and the yeah, text yeah. detox, all of that, you guys, like yeah. we talk about so much on the show, how financially people get in such trouble because they are, they're addicted to their phone. They're yeah. seeing what all's available. They're mm -hmm. seeing what everyone has, all of it, right? It's like yeah. that comparison thing oh, is yes. so stressful. It's a never ending game. And to like, just have hard stops with it. Mm -hmm. It's not just good for your money, you guys. It's good for your soul. It's good, yeah. it's good for that renewal. Yeah, comparison is a thief of joy. Yes, Like a lot it. of us have heard that, we yeah. know that, but that's what the scroll does. You always look at somebody's life who's better than yours. Yes. And you always think, well, what do I need to do? And that, and we know that money doesn't bring like that inner joy. Like it helps make life more like work. It makes it work. Yes, for but, sure. But in the end, like let's make sure that we're being present with our people and we're being honest with ourselves. Yes. About, like, and you're able to stuff. do that connection mm -hmm. with your people when you do rest mm -hmm. and restore and that connection's there and then the creativity. Yeah, the creates last because you want to collaborate with the people you love and yeah. it helps. It helps if you're in good relationships yes, with them. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so it kind of builds on itself. Yes, so great. Rebecca, thanks for being yeah, alone. Thanks okay, for your book, me. Rhythms yes. of Renewal, yes. they can find it where? Anywhere. Books are sold. And where yep. can they find you? I'm at Rebecca Lyons, and it's R E B E K A H L Y O N S. I always have to caveat that. There you go. And, or RebeccaLyons.com. Yeah. So great. Well, thanks for all the work you Thank do. You. Seriously, you bring so much hope to a subject that feels hopeless and scary and people can't always have the words or be able to feel like they can grab onto it. And I feel like you do such a great job Thank you. of that. So Thank thanks for, for being on. Thanks. Absolutely. Absolutely.